Imagine if you were more than 100 kilos overweight and literally lived to eat and eat and eat. But what if you were faced with a choice of losing your weight or losing your life? Would you do something about it? Well, now we're going to. This is going to be life-saving. That's something everyone said. Not feeling good. Get it out. When it comes to the super obese, <laughs> these people are too big, even for the biggest loser. How do you feel about yourself? I have had, you know, that occasional thought of that it's too hard, it's all too hard. And you just want to give up. The really depressing part about my body is just that I've let myself and my stomach just get so big. I was sitting at home, bored out of my brain, and I was just eating, 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 eating. From what the doctors have sort of said, like, if you keep going in it, I was going to kill myself. I wasn't sort of going to make it to 40. I want to have babies and get married. I know that in the position I'm in, that wouldn't happen. I feel tired. It takes a lot to drag this around every day. People don't want to be seen with a fat person. Tonight, we meet Wayne. For as long as he can remember, he's been the fat kid. The kid who got brutally bullied at school and felt nothing but shame. Obviously, growing up through school, you definitely get uh, teased about, like, my weight, like, name-calling and stuff like that. You learn to block out whatever you sort of... whatever you need to to sort of get yourself through the day. Even as a child, Wayne became the master of the cover-up. I always sort of learnt to put on a, the tough face, the brave face. I mean, it was something I never really talked about. And that made his life as the fat kid almost unbearable. I honestly think a lot of my childhood and stuff like that, I'd repressed to the point where I couldn't remember it because it was just the way I learnt to cope with what I was dealing with. But that didn't stop this overweight little boy from becoming a fat teen and then a super obese man. At his heaviest, a massive 227 kilos. And then, a little over a year ago... I thought I had, like, a chest infection, a bit of a cold, and I was really, really short of breath, um, to the point where I'd take sort of four or five steps and have to stop to catch my breath. Um, went and seen the, a GP, he said to order a blood test, just get a blood test done to see what's going on. And uh, he goes, I need you to go to emergency now. That's when I started to panic. So I went up, had a scan done, came back down, and he goes, yeah, you've got several blood clots on each of your lungs. How did that feel? I was in tears, I didn't know what was going on. I was sort of freaking out. That was my turning point. That was when I decided that I wasn't happy and I needed to change things no matter what sort of happened. In the next hour, we'll see Wayne's remarkable one-year transformation. You must be feeling amazing. The physical. Get it out. Mental. This is your future. And medical pain. I just wanted to get it over and done with. This is the true story of a man who has just one year to save his life by halving his body weight. I've got to change it for my health and solely for me. Wayne is a man who is simply too big. <laughs> 27-year-old Wayne Greenshields shares a house with his sister Sandra. As children, neither could understand why Wayne was so big. As time went on and no one was able to offer him a solution to his weight or a reason as to why he had the weight, that perhaps it started to become like a bit of a, a vicious circle in a way that he would take comfort in the food and maybe that contributed to his weight. Eating became Wayne's crutch, food his obsession. Now he's addicted to it. And despite the threat to his life, he can't stop binge eating. The biggest thing for me was obviously I love soft drinks, chocolates and ice creams. It'd be quite easy for me to sit down and watch TV with a packet of Tim Tams and next little thing you're looking down, the packet's empty. I wasn't eating to enjoy the food, I was just eating to make myself feel better. And that's sort of what 
get you into sort of the downward sort of spiral. Weighing in at 227 kilos, Wayne was not only eating himself to death, he couldn't exercise, play footy or find love. In terms of just relationships and, and having a sort of a normal loving life and, and being married and kids, you want to be a dad or what's the, yeah, what's the future hold for like, you? I've always wanted to have kids. It's one of the things I've always looked forward to. And I think it comes down to me personally, like I'm not happy with myself. Um, I think that makes it hard for me to get my head around that someone else can be happy with me as well. He has so much that he hides because of his weight. I'm just looking forward to it all coming out and, you know, people being able to see the way that I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Big sookie. You going to mug me? I might get a mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run a decent marathon. Thank you very much. Download Veely now. Believe it or not, Wayne's already lost 35 kilos on a liquid diet in the hope of qualifying for a stomach stapling operation. But he can no longer do it alone. And that's where this man comes in. First impressions of Wayne, good looking kid. He's a big lad. Today I see a real hard time ahead for both of us, but a real rewarding time. As I was walking through the gym, it's a bit daunting. It's not a place that I'm comfortable in being. Hi, Wayne. Hi, how, how are you? Lee Campbell, I'm here to give you a new life. How are you, Lee? When he walked in the door, I noticed he doesn't like looking at people, he doesn't like confrontation. Hidden behind not taking responsibility of who he is or what he needs to do. Come over here, let's weigh ourselves. All right, let's see. One eighty-nine. Definitely feel that my weight prevents me from living my life to the fullest and being as happy as I can be. So, blood pressure, mate. One fifty over ninety-nine. Do you understand what what that's doing to your heart? For the normal average person, it's one twenty over eighty. So you're putting your heart under a huge amount of stress just by carrying this weight at the moment. The guy that Wayne is at the moment is the guy that uh, eaten his way to death. Bang. Waist measurement, 170. You know, waist measurement over 100, mm -hmm. prone just more to cancer, all those different areas. He's in so much trouble. I mean, I can't even explain uh, the way he must feel. Wayne, you have a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. You're so young, you're killing yourself. I think we're both shocked of how he is. Mentally, for me, this is going to be massive. Mentally, for him, this is going to be, you know, life saving. I'm going to help him discover that person inside of him that he so wants to be physically and mentally. He wants to be someone, and he is someone who's very smart and very strong. I'm willing to work as hard as I possibly can for you. Yeah. I was killing myself and that feeling is the drive behind me and making me want to change the way I was sort of living my life to make sure that I'd never have that situation again. Over the next 40 days, Lee wants Wayne to lose 20 kilos and over the next year, that will climb to 100 kilos. Not feeling good, get it out. This is a transformation you won't believe. Let's see. Wayne Greenshield's first step on the scales was the reality check he needed to get his life back on track. 189. So, blood pressure, mate. 150 over 99. The guy that Wayne is at the moment is the guy that uh, eaten his way to death. Trainer Lee Campbell is determined to turn Wayne's life upside down for good. And that will start with what he's putting in his mouth. Mate, your new life of fresh fruit and vegetables. Oh. Love it or love it? I love it. Looks love good. It. So Wayne's eating habits and food, a lot of sugars, a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of you know, saturated fats. Dad has to go out. We're going to get him into the headspace of, OK, I'm going to go back and have a bit of hummus with carrot instead of a big burger or takeaway fish and chips. Morning breakfast, nice high in fibre foods, fruit and vegetables. 
bit of yogurt, some teas, no soft drinks at all. Yeah. At all. Your lunch is you can steam all your veggies, packed ready to go at lunch. Nice and easy and fresh. You know, no processed food at all. It was easy to get sort of takeaway and basically just have that for the main meal. Just very quick, easy sort of solutions to getting food rather than going and getting something healthy. These revs, RPMs, revs per minute, is what you've got to work on, nice and fluent. And just get comfortable in sitting on the bike and feeling as though you know, you're doing a good workout. He's never exercised before, so this is all new ground for him. This is terra firma. He just needs to understand what he can do. And this is the exciting part. You've got, I've got someone that I can actually mould into what I think his vision will be for himself. You've got this beautiful, nice little hill area here mm -hmm. that we're going to walk up and down. The sculpting of this you know, young man into a big, strong, proud man started today. And this is the exciting part for both of us because it started. And we can now start looking ahead on the plan, what he needs to do to get him healthy, happy, and live longer. Good workout. Wayne has 40 days to drop 20 kilos. And his training will be relentless. One of those guys that puts his hands out and you know, you've got to take it and lead him down the path because, again, he's never had, I don't think he's had someone who's led him or he's been inspired by or for before in his life who's, you know, a bloke as well. At his peak weight of 227 kilos, Wayne was twice the weight of the average Aussie male. And if he ever wants to be treated like one, he needs to lose half his body weight in just a year. Today I was pushed harder than I thought I'd be possibly able to go. Um, push parts sort of past the hurt feeling and sort of just got those couple of extra reps out and yeah now I'm just trying to catch my breath and recover. But three weeks into his new diet and exercise regime, Wayne's fear of the blood clots that could kill him forces him into a dramatic decision. I can't do it just on my own. I can't do it with the diet or the exercise. I need some form of help as well. So I went and seen Dr Michael France about a sleeve gastrectomy. You can see the little staples here. Basically, the operation involves reducing the capacity by removing about two-thirds of the stomach. I guess with you, Wayne, our biggest worry is, because you are so big, is that whether your liver, which is this thing here, whether that's shrunk down enough so we can actually physically get to your stomach. Wayne's already had one life-threatening condition associated with his weight, which could have killed him, um, and I think that was a big wake-up call for Wayne. All operations have a risk, but the risk of Wayne not losing weight and staying at his current weight are actually significantly higher than the, the risks of the operation. Ultimately, I guess that the biggest risk is premature death. So the gastric sleeve is a permanent solution? Yeah, the gastric sleeve, if I go ahead with it and get it done, it's something that's not reversible. Right. You mm -hmm. can never change back, you yeah. can never decide. So in that respect, it's, it's full on because you can never sort of mm. go back to eating normally or anything like that. In the next couple of weeks, Wayne will have to make that decision on whether to go under the knife. In the meantime, it's nearly six weeks since this journey began. Wayne's first target was 20 kilos lost in just 40 days. Today, we'll find out if he's on track. So, Wayne, it's time to be weighed. Yeah. It's been 40 days. You've had physical challenges, emotional challenges. How do you think you're going to go? I would love the 169, but I'm sort of hoping anything in the lower 170s to sort of be happy with. OK, well, the scales don't lie. You ready to be weighed? I am. Step up. Your weight of the first weigh-in is 189. Your weight today is... 189. OK, well, the scales don't lie. You ready to be weighed? I am. Step up. Wayne's first goal was to lose 20 kilos in 40 days. Your weight of the first weigh-in is 189. Your weight today, 171 kilos. Pretty happy about that. Mate, you should be ecstatic about that. 
18 kilos. It's good to have that new energy boost sort of kick that just come out of finding out I'd lost that sort of 18 kilos since first meeting with Lee. But the real work starts now. Yeah. This is where we really get stuck into it. Work on that cardio, we start to work really hard on the rest of your life. All my hard work's been rewarded and shown on the scales. Well done. Thanks, mate. Fantastic effort. Wayne's achieved so much so far, and could this go wrong for him? I don't think so. He has that much determination and that much self-drive now. He's discovered this inner person that he's not like. He knows now how to push himself. He knows how to find a little bit more. He knows how to face his fears. He knows also that the person he's becoming is the person he wants to be. And that's what he's been fighting for so long. Despite his early weight loss, Wayne's fear of more blood clots and an early death has brought him here for a sleeve gastrectomy, which will remove two thirds of his stomach, drastically reducing its capacity for food. The lead up to surgery was very nerve wracking. I just wanted to get it over and done with. Starting to feel really nervous now. Sort of helping just to watch the clock. It's just a waiting part now. Having that fear of, of dying, not seeing 30 years old is the reason why I knew this time I had to make the decision whether I was going to succeed and live mm. or I was going to fail and die. Wayne's stomach will be partially removed with just a tube or sleeve left, but his weight loss is far from a certainty. If he continues to eat too many high calorie foods and doesn't exercise enough, the remaining stomach will stretch over time, causing even more weight gain. Take you Wayne could still end up back where he started. Because of my weight and uh, obviously I've had a previous health issue with uh, a blood clot, they were obviously concerned about me clotting. They were sort of expecting the worst. Have you got a goal just without? A goal? Yes, he's taking an upfront risk, but he's taking that risk with the hope that he'll have a, a long-term gain and that he'll have a much uh, longer life uh, and a much better quality of life. We took the bougie out. That's what we use to size the stomach. So that's how we work out how much stomach we're leaving behind. The stomach's shaped like a bag, and basically what we're doing is we're changing it from the shape of a bag into the shape of a tube. Um, so obviously that, that sort of reduces the capacity. Now we'll put some blue dye down just to check that the staple line's OK. And then we'll pull the old stomach out. So that's the, um, the stomach that we've removed from Wayne. That's the back or the, um, the stretchy part of the stomach. And what we've left him with is a tube. With his parents close by, Wayne is yet to wake up from the operation he believes could save his life. The surgery went really well, so that's something I was very thankful for. This is the tool that I needed to, to help me get rid of everything that I was carrying around. It really feels like the weight has been lifted. My relationship with food since the operation has changed dramatically. I no longer sort of have a drive to, to eat or a hunger drive, so to speak of. It's more solely just eating by the clock, eating because I have to eat. I can miss meals and not eat, so that's my main concern. But the danger of Wayne not eating enough and becoming malnourished is very real. He needs the help of our nutritionist. Should we go shopping? <laughs> Come on in. He simply is dealing with the fact that he cannot eat much food in one go. And because the major part of his stomach is no longer there, he's not getting the same hunger signals to the brain. Now, in a way, that makes it easier, but it also means that it's very hard for him to eat without getting stomach pains, stomach cramping, feeling really full with a very small quantity of food. And that can just make it hard to make sure he doesn't get malnourished. One of the things I'm a little bit concerned about with you is to make sure that you're getting enough protein because there's this sort of very small amount of food going in and a limited amount of foods that need a lot of chewing. But the other flip side of that is that they can go the other way and start not paying any attention to the nutrition and just thinking about how can I get the best foods that are really tasty to me in. I don't want it to be 
too thick and heavy for you because then you're going to find it hard to digest. Yep. There's a lot of fibre in there. So they could be having chocolate instead of something far more nutritious. So we've got to be careful with Wayne that we help him to be in that centre line where he still has enough interest in choosing good foods. That's nice. Yeah? Yeah, it's good. good. So this is just such a great way of you upping your protein intake a little bit without having to eat, you know, big chunks of meat that are going to be hard for you to digest right now. Wayne's kept up his strict training regime for more than two months, but this is the last time he'll see Lee for weeks. This once tragically bullied kid needs to be prepared to go it alone. First workout goal, two hours of exercise, straight, yep. and on a beautiful beach here. You ready for it? Ready as I'm ever going to be, mate. You ready? Ready. How do you think you've been going up till now? I've been going really well, but haven't pushed it for the two hours yet, so don't know how that's going to go. Might be dead by the end, but we'll get through it. All right, let's go. Kicking and screaming. Push me back. Good. Good, next one, push me out. You're not getting me this time. Push, 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 push. Well, the exercises Wayne needs to do and the mechanics of the whole program is to toughen him up to make him understand when he thinks there's nothing left, there's something more in the tank. Give me everything for the next 20 minutes, let's go. Everything, can we pick up? Come on. Everywhere I run, you run. Let's go, up we go. And he knows there's more, but that's what he's never done in his life. He's never taken the next step to be that person or make a decision. Now I'm being this man, now I'm being a guy that will be respected and I'll be proud of the skin I walk in. Every time that ball hits the ground, Yep. It's getting rid of some baggage. Yeah. All the bad stuff. All the things that have gone on over the years. This is the day that changes, everything picks up from here, yeah? That ball into the ground. Every time, it's getting rid of something. Get it out. Come on, mate. This is your future. This is your future. Every time that hits the ground, that's something everyone said. Everything's done. Not feeling good. Get it out. Wayne's hidden behind himself for too long and he's hiding the fact that He's scared of what he might be. It's something that, by oh, the feeling, I don't think you can actually get rid of the feeling, but... The memories are always going to be there. Yeah. But you should build on that, that strength on that. That's what I'm trying to do. And you're doing it. You're doing it. Each day is a different step. And so the philosophy behind Wayne is exactly that. Letting Wayne become this man, this person, who he secretly, deep inside, knows who he is. Just got rid of the bad, now we're putting in the good. This is all about you and your future, okay? Is this a man who can lose nearly 100 kilos in just one year? One remarkable year in which he must save his own life and find a completely new one. <laughs> Driven by trainer Lee Campbell, Wayne lost 20 kilos in the first two months of his new life. Pretty happy about that. Mate, you should be ecstatic about that. Then underwent a stomach stapling surgery. The lead up to surgery was very nerve wracking. Just wanted to get it over and done with. Outwardly, his new fitness is paying off. Just come on, get it out. But inside, his fear of being made fun of because of his weight remains. Every time that ball hits the ground, yeah. It's getting rid of some baggage. My goal, besides the fact of getting myself healthy, is just seeing what it's going to be like to be 100 kilos, hopefully by the end of the year. That's sort of the driving thing behind me, just to experience everything again for the first time, not having the weight sort of in the back of your mind. Ever since being bullied as a fat kid, Wayne's avoided making himself a target hanging out with other boys. Now that's about to change. Check off. Half man on man. Being overweight, that's something I have always avoided, was the groups of people, and so we're going to have to deal with that, plus the, the fact of actually physically exercising. But the way to look at it is, I like, don't know what's going to happen until you give it a shot, so that's what we're here to do. Team sports were once this young boy's worst nightmare, and now, it's a young man's dream come true. That's a real journey of self-discovery, isn't it? I mean, you are rediscovering yourself 
as you're sort of losing size. Have you surprised yourself in any way? Yeah, well, I've never never played like a team sport and stuff yeah. when I was in school, but for years, like I've been at barbecues and parties and stuff like that where all the boys would go out and have a kick of the footy and it's just, I've always sort of thought, no, nah, I don't need to do that. Why would you want to go run around like an idiot for? And it's like, I just did it for a couple of hours, had an absolute ball and like, jump back into the car and I'm sitting there and I've just like put the key in the ignition and I've like nearly like started to burst into tears and then I'm like just had this overwhelming feeling and so those sort of moments have been that's euphoric yeah it's been the best part of this journey I know I've still got a long way to go to sort of make it through a full full-on session with the boys but Coming from doing nothing to sort of half keeping up with the A's is a massive achievement for me and something I'm definitely very proud of. Wayne's always felt too fat to travel on a plane. Instead, he's hidden away and never left Adelaide. I think it's just an apprehension just from being overweight and knowing that uh, airplane seats aren't exactly the biggest seats in the world. With his second weigh-in looming, it's goodbye Adelaide, hello Sydney, and his first training session with Lee in more than a month. Now is where the transformation really starts to happen. This is where you start to transform everything else now, physicality-wise. Brain-wise, you're there, now it's just all physical. So we're going to up the level, we're going to go back to the start where we find this man inside, right? Step out of the shadows, into the light. Look up to the front, four, five, I've got you. Now, you're starting to visualise and feel how good it is to feel great and strong and be proud of the man he's becoming. He's getting out of being a little boy into a man now. And he's got a man's body, he's got a man's attitude, and it's about him being strong. Being in Sydney, like coming from Adelaide, never leaving Adelaide before, and not thinking anything about not leaving Adelaide, basically just awaken that sort of I need to go out and see things. Like, I need to get out in the world. That rehatching myself and building a new identity as the slimmer, newer version of Wayne, like, he loves to travel. And Sydney was the first destination on a very long list. It's more than two months since Wayne's last weigh-in. His drastic weight loss is obvious in the excess skin now hanging from his body. Six months ago, he was more than 220 kilos. Two months ago, Wayne was just over 170. Now is the day of reckoning. To keep up his goal of losing half his body weight in a year, Wayne needs to lose at least 10 kilos. Training kills me every time I go out and train, but anyone can go out and train. It's getting yourself sorted out where you can actually say, I'm gonna achieve a goal and know in your own mind that you are gonna do it. Wayne O, up to the scales. Your weight today is... 1 up to the scales. The last time Wayne and his trainer met, he weighed in at over 170 kilos. 161.7. Pretty happy with that, mate. Pretty happy? Pretty happy. Over the top with that. Absolutely destroyed it. Remembering this guy was in critical need of a different life, he's gonna die. It just shows me how much will this guy wants to be this man. Now, if that's not inspiring and motivating for me or him, there's something wrong. All that hard work you've been doing, mate, fantastic. In eight months, eight, more. Wayne's lost more than 60 kilos. Every time that ball hits the ground, yeah. it's getting rid of some baggage. Each day, his fear of death through more blood clots fades a little more. But Lee wants the man inside that once super obese body to embrace life like he's never done before. Morning, Wayne. -o. Morning, Lee. How are you, mate? Good, bro. OK. Where are we off to? It's a lovely time of the morning. Mate, still a surprise. Head down the road, I'll direct you the way. Awesome. Putting myself in sort of an uncomfortable situation is one of the things that I've avoided a lot from being overweight, so I was definitely looking forward to seeing what was going to happen this morning and what we had to do. We arrive at the fish markets, 
It's about Wayne discovering the man that he wants to be. So the new experience is just that, getting out, working in an environment that isn't stuck behind a desk, and he can now explore and then think, geez, no, I can do this. I'm actually a man. Better keep up. I think these blokes will give you a very hard time if you don't, mate. Come on, Wayno. Keep up, Wayno. Wayno, oh, you can't throw the fish away. You've got you to keep these. You've got to keep those, mate. Stuck to the ice, mate. <laughs> the guys in there took to Wayne like fish to water. They loved him, they embraced him, they just revved him on the whole morning, and he worked the best out of all the Scales guys. The best part about it was having a challenge laid down six months ago. I definitely wouldn't have kept up with the auction and done anything close to what I did today. Wait, mate. You've only got a, a ton to go. You've nearly moved a thousand. Oh, you said you're not... Yeah, the last fish you got a kiss it, mate. Yeah. All right, Wayne. Good <laughs> This is where he's evolving into this man and becoming this man and being proud of what he's done. And I'm very proud of what he's done. Hands out. That's 25 kilos. Hold that. Don't drop, man. Don't drop it. <laughs> Guys, that's how much Wayne's lost since he started already. Do you reckon you've found the key for you? You know, you've reached a a spot, I think, where you've you've realised what it is you've been holding on to. I'm not locked in now. I've opened myself up to being able to be to change, and I think that's the best way of putting it. It's like it was that very closed-minded sort of thing of everyone knows how you lose weight, you eat right, and you exercise, and that's when I sort of had that health scare and went to hospital and coming out of hospital, and that's what I thought I had to do sort of open that door and as I'm starting to realise why I did certain things and overcoming the reasons why I did those, I think that door is getting further and further open. But there's one part of his transformation that Wayne is still desperately unhappy with. Since I've started to lose weight, I can't see a great deal of change but like there is certain parts where I do notice I'm getting smaller and um, one of those things is like, with my arms. A lot of loose skin and stuff on the bottom of them now and obviously with the extra weight and stuff I was carrying was filling out that extra skin and extra bit there so that is one of the areas I can see a change but it's still something I'm not happy with, I've still got a long way to go. Like everything seems to be sort of sagging down a bit lower. And that's starting to be really, really noticeable so mm -hmm. My next goal would be to obviously to look into that and to see what I can do about getting that removed. A month later... Hello, Wayne. The ever-shrinking Wayne must decide whether to take another drastic step towards a completely new body. Today we're at an appointment to see the skin surgeon, just to see where we can go from here and find out what they can do with the loose excess skin, obviously getting it all cut off. I tell patients just to be cautious and not have expectations which are too high. Only ever having one operation and that was basically complete success. I think that sort of inspired me with a bit of confidence that I wouldn't usually have. You've certainly got arm folds or the bat wings, mm -hmm. breasts. Mm -hmm. There is an epigastric fold. He's got about 15 kilograms of tissue which will be eliminated from the equation just through the excisional surgery. Your most prominent fold is your apron of, of skin and, and fat. It's a daunting prospect if you wanted to remove all of the spare skin. Because it's gone from such a massive sort of size down to hopefully a very small size, it's gonna be something I have to look at. So this is the volume of tissue that might be removed from you. These are nine and 10 kilogram pieces of skin and fat. This loose skin and sort of excess fat sort of attached to me, I know it's there and I know, it, I know it's big, it needs to be cut off. So this is sort of what I was expecting to see. People still die from such procedures. And so it shouldn't be taken lightly. But then again, you have to ask yourself, what if one exercised and dieted appropriately but found that they were dripping with 
aprons of skin, would you not wish them to go to that extra step to improve their self-esteem? It becomes a value judgment then. I know it has to be done and it's part of the sort of process of what I want to do. At the end of the day, it'll get to me, my end goal, where I want to be. And we're about to see... So I've been cut pretty much all the way around now. ...just what happens at the end of Wayne's remarkable one-year journey. From the fat guy to the man he longs to be. Twelve months ago, Wayne Greenshields weighed 227 kilos. The guy that Wayne is at the moment is the guy that uh, eaten his way to death. This super obese man began a journey to save his own life. Your weight today, 171 kilos. Terrified that blood clots would end his life, he had a stomach stapling operation. This is the tool that I needed to help me get rid of everything that I was carrying around. It really feels like the weight has been lifted. And as the weight fell off, uh, he finally started to overcome his bullied childhood. Every time that is the ground, that's something everyone said, not feeling good, get it out. I'm just looking forward to it all coming out and, you know, people being able to see the way in the I know. When weighing in at more than 220 kilos, Wayne couldn't walk 50 metres, let alone run it. Less than 12 months later, he has a new goal. It's not 500 metres or five kilometres. Instead, it's a full 12 kilometre run for a man who never exercised for the first 27 years of his life and nearly ate himself to death. This is a major event for you. I mean, this is... This isn't just 12 k's, this is a whole life change. This is everything. I mean, when we started this, you know, 10 metres was a difficult point for you. Now, you're about to do 12 k's, your whole life has changed, everything is looking up, life is good. Today's another kickstart for him. If he gets through this, he knows he's getting towards the end of the race. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. So where are you go on your 12k journey? Sunday Mail City to May Fun Run. I think this run is a mental hurdle I needed to refocus me to get to what I want. He's always been able to. It's about the self-belief and the discovery of this guy who he is. Halfway, mate. Six k's. Four k's more than you've ever, ever run before. You gonna get to the end? Yeah. Come on. Each kilometre I hit, it was, I've done that now. I'm still going, and I hit the next one, and it's like, well, I've hit this one now, legs are still going. I'm hurting, but I'm still capable of doing this. So, in my own mindset, it was the fact that I decided to start it running, I was going to run it. I refused to quit. What a brave guy. I mean, this guy couldn't walk 15 metres before when he started. And could this go wrong for him? I don't think so. He has that much determination and that much self-drive now. He's discovered this inner person. You're going to do it all right. Come on. I really feel like today in this run has let me let go of the, those emotions and let me just push through to what I think I can achieve. Good job, mate. Good job. This is you know, one of the proudest moments this guy has ever had in his life, and me also. I mean, this guy couldn't walk 10 metres. Now he's just run 12 kilometres. Great job, mate. Good job. Hey? Ran all the way. Proud of yourself? Today, just proving to myself and using that anger and emotion that I've got to get me to the end is something I needed to do to realise that now I am where I am, but I've got a place I need to be and nothing's going to stop me now. This guy's got the world ahead of him. He will do anything. He can do anything. Give me a week or so, I reckon I'm going to be wanting to do this again. Just the feeling I got at the end. That's, um, 
That's a priceless feeling. The man I met a year ago in the gym when we, Wayne first started this journey was this, he wasn't a man, he was just a, a person living. He's carried, you know, such a heavy burden of weight. Now he's discovered this new person that he has become and that he's wanted to become. So Wayne, let's have a look at exactly what they've done. So first surgery here down the side, both sides to then bring the abdominal area back in. Yeah, so the next surgery is the chest to obviously continue to obviously flatten that out. So Second under one. this is a six pack. So we say. <laughs> yeah? Hopefully. If not, can I borrow yours? <laughs> you can borrow mine any day. <laughs> For the size Wayne was, it's absolutely impossible to get rid of that excess skin. He needs surgery. So a total of five surgeries you're going to have. Five, yeah. And between 20 and 25 kilos of weight gone. Did you ever think this possible when you first started at 227 kilos? To actually get here and to be looking at that 100 kilo goal and being a realistic goal is just mind blowing. Not only I have I lost the weight, I've lost the excess baggage mentally of the problems I had. Good job, mate. Good job. Being overweight as a kid, being overweight as I've grown up, like I've been able to let go of that to enjoy my new life. Living. Yeah. Living again, living properly, living the way you're meant to live. Yeah. It doesn't just make me proud, it makes me uh, you know, emotional to see this guy travel the journey, achieve what he's achieved, and along the way get rid of all the burden, all the demons that he's had to deal with all his life and uh, move on. So one of the 227. My heaviest weight was 227 kilos. So that's the reminder for me never to go back to the way I was. And now it's my turn to catch up with the new Wayne, who can at last walk into a menswear shop without shame. At the beginning of the year, what size were you? in terms of what was available in the store, what size were you? Um, an 11XL. Do you remember what you were around the waist? Um, 170 when we first started. Okay, we are, that's sitting at 123. Okay. Look at that, look how much, look at that. Well, I could fit in here, look, there's no little person in here. <laughs> you've lost, you've lost a whole other self. That's amazing, what does that feel like? to look back at it now and to realise what I'd actually missed out on by having that size and living that lifestyle. It's very, sort of very upsetting to think about it, but yet very empowering to know that I was there and I'm, I am where I am now, so. What, what's the upsetting thing? What's the, the upsetting the thing? thing that you sort of, like, I go back and dwell on is the fact of I went through my teens, my early 20s, in that lifestyle, and not realising what I was missing out on. And looking at it now, even though I'm still 28, but looking back on it and saying, like, 10 years of my life, I lost mm. to, to having a weight problem, but it's my sole motivation and stuff to keep me going, getting further is the fact that I'm not there anymore. Oh, OK. What do you think? Like that? Okay. I like the jeans. Yeah, I like the top. Four more skin removal surgeries will cut another 20 kilos off Wayne's body. What could be better than losing 100 kilos, except finding a life this young man never knew existed? I did everything to make everyone happy when I was a big person. Now I do everything to make myself happy. And what more could a young man want than a future full of hope?